I'm Andy and welcome to my channel about crypto. In today's video, I want to talk about front running, what it actually is, how front running bots work, how it can impact your transactions and how you can protect yourself from this using block wallet. This video will be split into four main parts. Initially, I'll be talking about liquidity, then slippage, what it is, how it works and how we can adjust it. Then I'll be talking about front running and front running bots. And finally, how you can utilize block wallet to protect yourself from, from front running bots essentially. If you're already familiar with some of those subjects, such as, let's say, liquidity or slippage, you can just simply skip those sections and move on to the bit that's relevant and interesting for you. If you're quite new to crypto or if you're not entirely sure what, what those terms mean or why they're important in this context, then it's worth, of course, watching the whole video. As always, if you find those videos helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Also, please do check out my private Discord. You can find the link to it in the description. Okay, so first of all, before we start talking about front running and how to protect yourself from it, we need to start talking about liquidity and essentially how prices of assets in the crypto space work. If you go to the shop, well, you know what sort of price you will pay for, let's say, I don't know, a loaf of bread or whatever other item. In crypto, of course, you know that the prices are highly volatile. We can have a look here at Binance and the price of Bitcoin on, on Binance. Of course, the price keeps changing all the time. But what I have open here, rather than the normal chart, is, is the depth of, of that particular asset, in this case, Bitcoin. And as you can see, if I start zooming into it, there's only very small buy and sell orders which actually match this particular price. So if I want to buy a very small amount of, of Bitcoin, well, I can probably buy it at either exactly this price or something very, very close to it. However, the more Bitcoin I want to buy, well, essentially there is not enough people selling at that particular price to fulfill my orders. Because the way the market works is it's not a fixed price of, of Bitcoin that, that you can buy it for. For every purchase, there must be a much matching sale order and as you can see here those steps are essentially well the green ones are buy orders the red ones are sell orders and as you can see they are slowly coming apart and in this case because bitcoin is highly liquid asset there is huge volume uh, of course the prices actually are not changing that much if i zoom out however you will start seeing that, well, at some point, the prices start coming apart very, very significantly. But of course, you would have to place absolutely ridiculous, ridiculous order in, uh, to get to those, those higher prices. However, if you are trading an asset which has much lower volume, let's say a microcap altcoin, where there is very little liquidity provided, it's not traded on major exchanges, it's just Uniswap, so basically it's just peer-to-peer -peer trading, you may find that actually at the price you want to buy it, there is very little, there are very few people who want to sell it at that price. There is a very small amount available at that price. So you may find that the price starts going up quite quickly if you want to buy larger volume. And even more so, something that we observed a lot in spring last year and then towards the end of last year, when the market is booming and you want to buy a small cap altcoin that some big crypto influencer just posted about, you will see that the price, of course, is skyrocketing straight away. I mean, it can go like 2x or 3x, literally in a matter of hours or sometimes even quicker than that. So what happens is that not only the price is changing very rapidly, but also there is not enough liquidity in the pool to fulfill all, the, all those orders. So if you try to buy it at any given price, your order will probably fail because by the time the transaction will be executed, the price already changed and essentially you cannot buy this asset anymore. So transaction fails and then you have to resubmit it. But of course now the price is higher. So that's the issue of liquidity or assets with small liquidity. Basically you have to consider that if you want to buy larger volume of that particular asset, the price will start changing quite quickly. So your whole order won't be fulfilled at the price you see on the screen at any given point in time. And then also this is compounded by any sort of event when the asset becomes really popular, suddenly there is higher demand and the price is changing very, very rapidly. And then of course that combined with low liquidity means that it's really difficult to fulfill your order, if that makes sense. 
So now we can move on from liquidity to something called slippage. And slippage is basically a percentage that you, can, that you are willing to sacrifice of your initial amount you want to invest in order to fulfill your transaction. So let's say that slippage is set to 5% and you have $1,000 worth of ETH and you want to buy token XYZ with those $1,000 in ETH. If the slippage is 5%, then this basically means that you are willing to sacrifice up to $50, which is 5% of $1,000, in order to buy this token XYZ. Basically, you accept the fact that this token is somewhat illiquid or highly illiquid, and there will be difference in price in order to, to, buy, to be able to buy $1,000 worth of that token. So what happens then is even though you're spending $1,000 worth of ETH, you only end up with $950 worth of the token you've purchased. This is, of course, separate to gas fees, which is the fee you pay for the, for the transaction. This is basically just a var variance in price, which you could say is something similar to like currency exchange rates. And the reality is that this slippage is actually something very, very common in when dealing with altcoins and with microcap altcoins, you may find that actually the slippage is going to be much higher, maybe 10% or more. Why would you sacrifice part of your initial investment? Well, if you're buying an altcoin, you're doing this because you expect it to go up in value probably quite rapidly or maybe not rapidly, but by quite a lot. So essentially sacrificing 5% of your initial investment or whatever other percentage is probably worth it if you expect that the token XYZ will go up like 200%, 500% or, or even more in value. And when the market is very active, let's say that we have an influencer posting about token XYZ. And token XYZ, let's assume it's a microcap altcoin, so there is not a huge volume of transactions, then suddenly someone mentions it with huge following, a lot of people are buying this token the price will start absolutely skyrocketing. What you will find that you may then need to change the slippage to something like 10 or 15% in order to be able to fulfill your order. So basically from your initial $1,000, there will be probably only like maybe $850 left after, after the slippage. So you are willing to take quite a big hit on that purchase because you know that the price is going up really rapidly and you can make that up and make much more. So this is how slippage works in, in theory. Here I can show you a practical example of how it works in Uniswap, and it will be the same with any other decentralized exchange. Let's say that I want to exchange some ETH I have in this wallet for some other token, something like, I don't know, whatever, Aave. It's quite large cap altcoin, so slippage shouldn't be huge. If I click on this triangle here, you can see here that minimum amount I will receive after slippage is just over four tokens. So basically here you can see that slippage is set to 3.93%. So whatever amount of ETH I have, so in this case $735 worth of ETH, I won't be getting $735 worth of Aave because of this slippage. I can adjust it manually. At the moment it's set to auto and this will, oh, now you can see that actually changed to 4.1. However, if I click on this cog here, you can see that now it's set to auto and it keeps changing, but I can also input any figure I want. Let's say I can put 10%. This is something what I would do if, if I expected that the price of the asset will be ch changing very, very quickly and automatic slippage adjustment may not be fast enough or may not be big enough to, to compensate for that change in price. And you can see that I got a warning here that your transaction may be front run and I will talk about that in a second. So basically this is how slippage works in in real life, if that makes sense. You can I'll change it back to auto. And most of the time, it's just something that happens in the background. You maybe notice it, maybe you're familiar with it, maybe you haven't even noticed it before because it's just done for you. And the higher the market cap and the more popular the asset, the higher the volume of trades, the lower the, the slippage. Because essentially there's a huge amount being 
bought and sold, there is a huge amount of orders, so it's quite easy to fulfill those orders. But if we're dealing with something that has much lower volume, lower liquidity, then the slippage must be much, much higher, something like 10, 15% or so. So I hope this illustrates what slippage is and how it works and how it impacts transactions. And now let's look at what is front running and how front running bots work and how they can impact your transaction. So in traditional finance, front running is illegal because essentially in order to be able to, to do it, you would have to have insider knowledge and conduct insider trading, which is illegal. However, in crypto, it's slightly different because all transactions are public. When you submit a transaction, let's say in, on Ethereum blockchain, that transaction is not immediately executed. It goes into sort of a holding pool called the mempool, where it waits with other transactions before they are all put through uh, within one block. And I think there's around 80 transactions in a sin single block. So basically, there is your transaction. This large block here is, is the mempool. There will be other transactions around it. And of course, that transaction goes through at some point. However, Let's say that it's the scenario we were talking about earlier. There's a microcap altcoin that was just mentioned by a big influencer. The price is skyrocketing. You really want to get that altcoin because you are still quite early and you want to make sure that, well, you expect essentially that it will do like, let's say, 5x. So you put, I don't know, maybe 10 or 15% slippage in order to make sure that you actually definitely get that altcoin. So here is your transaction waiting in the mempool with high slippage entered. What front running bots do is they scan the mempool for transactions, transactions which have high slippage. And what happens then is that they push two transactions with a higher gas fee to make sure that it's executed, the buy transactions executed before your transaction with high slippage. So they purchase token XYZ here before your transaction is executed because essentially they just Put, through, put it through with high enough gas to make sure that it goes through first. Then the price of that asset goes up, that token XYZ goes up because there was a purchase order here. You get less of those, fewer of those tokens because you have high slippage and basically you are willing to take that hit. And then as soon as your transaction is executed, the bot then sells those XYZ tokens at now higher price and pockets the difference between buying them here before your transaction and selling after your transaction. Of course, in reality, this won't be probably the only transaction. There'll be multiple transactions executed at a similar price level, which will drive the price up. Or it may be that there is a really big transaction coming through and that would be particularly attractive scenario for, for a bot. Let's say that someone buys like, I don't know, 10 ETH worth of extremely low cap altcoin. So that may already push the price a bit on top of all the other vol volume in the market. So then suddenly that bot, if it can get before your transaction, knowing that this transaction, let's say, has 10% slippage, well, it can then sell it at with 10% profit pretty much immediately. And this is how front running works. You need a bot in order to be able to execute it because otherwise you probably don't have time and speed to, to be able to execute transactions like this. But essentially the idea is that it looks for transactions with high slippage, pushes through by order to get in before that transaction, the price goes up, you lose because of the slippage, and then bot sells straight after and and that's how they get profit. Hope this makes sense. It may be a little bit of a difficult thing to, to visualize. Maybe if it is, rewatch this part of the video, or if you do have any questions, please pop them in the comment section or just join my Discord and we can have a chat there. But I hope this all, all makes sense. Of course, if the slippage was tiny, then the whole thing doesn't really work because there is not enough value here between those two um, or not enough change in value between these two transactions. So nothing would really happen. The, the gain would be minimal. But with high slippage transactions, there is certainly value in, in doing this. So how can you protect yourselves from, from front running bots? Well, you can use Block Wallet. 
And it's a project I mentioned a few times on this channel. It's an alternative to, to MetaMask, but with enhanced privacy functions. So there are things like privacy pool, pools, which I talked about in the past. You can watch one of my previous videos about, about Block Wallet. So essentially you can hide some of your assets in privacy pools by uh, using torna Tornado Cache. But what's really cool about Block Wallet is that this feature is actually within the wallet. You don't have to go through the Tornado Cache. Uh, it's sort of all done behind the scenes. You just click a button and it's all done for you. However, in this case, we'll look at how you can use those privacy features in order to protect yourself from, from front-running bots. Okay, so we are here now back in Uniswap, but this time I'm connected with, with a block wallet. And you will see the difference now that when I click on swap, confirm swap, now that the block wallet opens, I won't be exec actually executing the transaction. But here in advanced settings, I have option flashbots and I can activate it, save it. And then basically what it does is makes my, it makes my transaction private. It hides it from the mempool or when bots are scanning the mempool for transactions with higher uh, slippage, they cannot see this one because it's a private transaction and it's hidden from them. So essentially just in two clicks, I'm protecting myself from, from flashbots, which is something that maybe a lot of the time you don't really have to think about. But in those situations when the market is really active and when you really want to get into a particular project, and essentially when there is opportunity to make a lot of money, feature like this is extremely useful because it can protect you from well, essentially losing unnecessarily some of your investment on, on slippage and just losing it to, to a bot. So I think this is a really, really cool feature and really simple. And yeah, I could just make a really short video about block wallet and how this feature works, but I think it wouldn't really make much sense without fully explaining what is actually slippage and how flashbots work. I think this hopefully helps everyone who's maybe less familiar with the crypto space overall and yeah, will find this useful. So I hope that this video is helpful. I hope it helps you with understanding the concept of liquidity, slippage, how flashbots work and how you can use block wallet to, to protect yourself. And like I said earlier, if you have any questions, please pop them in the comment section or join the Discord channel. We can have a chat about this. Hopefully I can help you with them. And otherwise, thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye.